Hi everyone, it's Mary Jo from Enchantress Tarot. Welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year again and welcome in January 2019. I'm doing the new moon solar eclipse reading that's occurring in January on the 5th or 6th, depending on what hemisphere you're in, 2019. And it will be at 15 degrees of Capricorn. And Capricorn, we know, is our 10th house. That's the highest part of our chart. It's a cardinal sign. It's our reputation in the outer world and our strength. It's our career. It is the way we are given praise for what we do. It's about how we are of service to others, building solid foundations and structures, being reliable, dedicated, diplomatic, common sense, very practical and pragmatic and prudent, being responsible. That is the Capricornian energy. It's an earth energy and it's very grounded energy. It's stability. So that is being affected in our lives, depending on where in your chart it's going to be. It depends on everyone differently and how will it affect you. And anyone who has any 15 degrees in their chart, maybe you could look at that too. Um, also, it could be for many people something to do with men in their lives because it is solar so that is divine masculine energy so it could be things that have been obscured from your vision all right coming to light at this time um, it could also be father because capricorn does represent father a father figure or whoever was like a father in your life or the male dominance in your life or who protected you in your life that type of energy now we know with the new moon it's a great time to plant flowers and veggies that are above ground and um, because the light is waxing of the moon. Um, so we also look at the, the new moon is not a good time to do anything stressful to your body, especially in an earth sign like Capricorn. So don't cut your hair It'll, unless you want it to grow in really slow or thicker or more coarse or tweeze your eyebrows. Try not to get any tattoos or piercings. Also, don't do anything abusive, hard work around that two or three day cycle of the new moon. Try and be some uh, calm and loving to yourself. Nothing stressful uh, because it's too much trauma and impact on the body. Do try and let the body rest if you can at this time. And I know with Capricorn energy, we usually want to plan things and make them long term and see results, take action. But we want you to just right now grow things in the next 30 days, okay? We want you to maybe initiate new activities and um, do important calls, texts, meetings, things like that, you know, anything work-related. And look at it as Capricorn, 10th house. That would be like if you're down the street from your home and anyone is standing down the street and they look and they can say, oh, that's so-and-so's home. So that's how your outer world sees you. That's what represents you. So be very careful of that. Maybe you can tidy things up in your home, do a clean out, freshen up the paint, fix those shutters, do some work on the exterior of your home because that is how the outer world sees you. It's a reflection of you. Or if you live in an apartment or something, or clean those windows, clear out junk. Okay, and remembering Capricorn is the part of the body that would be the knees or the joints, the endoskeleton and exoskeleton. So the skin, the bones, you know, the muscular system. And you might even feel things in your joints or some aching things going on at that time until it passes. But knowing it's an earth element, use plants or a garden, crystals or some healing stones at the time of the new moon for your intentions, okay? So we look at the solar eclipse. I pulled the sun, the moon, and the world to emulate our earth. And it's interesting with this deck for the good tarot, it does look like we have like almost like an ecliptic look there. And just to give you a brief overview. So when we have the time of the eclipse, this would be the sun. This is the moon and this is the earth. So you're seeing how the shadow casts and it's blocking the moon there with the solar eclipse. So the total solar eclipse would take place in this like little piece of the conical triangle. Anything outside of that would be a partial solar eclipse or penumbra. That's what we're having now. So when we look at that, you see, because the moon is here, it's orbiting the earth. We always see this side. See, it always goes around. So it looks darkest on the new moon, but it has no light of its own. So we want to see now what's being obscured in our lives. What vision, okay, forward 
is being obscured because that's what the eclipses do. They are endings. They are, for some people, you're not even going to feel the impact of it. Other people are going to feel it very much so, depending on your chart. So you're, you're saying, okay, something can end at this cycle because something has to begin. Something new has to change. This is an exciting time. It might not feel it at the moment if it's something that looks like you lost your job or you broke up with someone. It is the um, beginning of something new that's going to come to you better. So it obscures your vision forwards, forcing you to be in the now. So where do you see yourself now? Is this where you want to be in your life? And this is very important with this new moon and Capricorn eclipse, okay? Because Capricorn, like I said, is our, our reputation, our strength in the outer world. We all need strength in the outer world, and it's going to be affecting us differently. So you want to look at where do you, where you see yourself now. I am, in, am I in the relationship I want to be in? Am I in the job I want to be in? Or career? Is my body in the position of health and strength and wellness that I want it to be in? Do I weigh what I want to weigh? Um, do I look like the way I want to look? Do I feel like the way I want to feel? Do I have the right people in my life? See, looking right now, and we've talked about that, the past is the past. You can't change it. Look at the now. So looking at the past of how you got to now. So right now is all that matters for what's coming. So here's what we want to do. Look at how does the now relate to the past. Am I in this situation because of people, places, things, thoughts, words, deeds, etc. that I did in my past? That's why I'm here now. But what can I do right now to change the present? Okay, and how can me changing the way I'm thinking and feeling now in this present time at this um, energy that I'm in to transmute energies, to transcend enemies, realign myself and take quantum leaps from this into what's coming in the future. Once you focus on right now and get yourself together right now in a good grounded, very Capricorn grounded practical way and looking to lay plans out for the future, um, in, in a positive way, instead of a lack, that is going to help you jump into what's coming without anxiety or fear. Okay, we want to keep our minds clear. So for right now, let's look at right now, what's being blocked, okay? Because it's a solar eclipse. So our vision forward is being blocked. We can't see like the sun would be the light of the day. Everything is obvious, right? We could see it. So with the solar eclipse, our view is obscured. Let's see. So what is being blocked from us right now? These could be hidden things too, secrets, gossip, um, jealousies, envy. I mean, you really could look at the spectrum of it. Um, not getting paid enough in your job, not being respected in your job or career, people not respecting you for the hard work and dedication, you know, not giving you the praise or the glory. So let's see what we have. Okay. Ten of air. Now, this is just like the regular uh, tarot when we look at this deck, even though they're oracle cards with the Ten of Air. So what aren't we seeing? Now, we know with the Tens, it's a new beginning. Air, this is our swords. It's the Ten of Swords. So in a way, we look at our mental realm. The way we've been thinking and speaking is very much interfering with things. So uh, we're either thinking too highly of someone or a situation, and it isn't what we think it is. And we're creating this image or illusion of this person or thing because we don't want to see it for what it really is. We don't want to know the truth about it. We're putting them in this position of high regard or putting them on a pedestal because uh, maybe we think so much of them. Maybe you have somebody at work or this job that you have a higher regard for than it really is worth. Or this person that you think is so wonderful and great or you love them and they're not all that in a bag of donuts. I mean, you're just creating that in your head and you're not being true to yourself. This would be the 10 of swords in the tarot. So it could be that you haven't been seeing things as they really are because in your mind you're creating this wonderful thing, but it's causing you misery. 
anxiety, stress, maybe even your body is starting to feel it, especially with Capricorn. Maybe you're feeling aches and pains in your body. Maybe you're getting headaches and stressors. Um, maybe even you're not seeing literally with your eyes, blurred vision, headaches, and we want this to end. Okay. And this is what's being blocked right now because it's the way you're seeing things as not not clear and with the eclipse it's also going to be like a revelation for you something is going to be shockingly revealed to you and you're going to realize i made some poor choices and it's okay this is all part of our life's journey but we need to take this and learn from it and saying wow if I keep doing this over and over again, I'm going to keep attracting the same situation, people, places, and things in my life. And you know, with the eclipses, they go on a 19-year cycle. If you don't learn this lesson now, working through the January eclipse for Capricorn Cancer we're doing, this is the new polarity, it's going to repeat itself again in 19 years. So with this, we're talking about graceful endings and hopefully beginnings meet a point of an epiphany, an end to old ways of thinking. So you could even use this mantra as they're giving you as a positive affirmation. It's all up from here. As I bless the ending, grateful for the lessons I have learned that can free me from patterns that no longer serve me. I allow my circumstances to end with grace. As I know something better can appear at any time, I am thankful that from now on, I can respond differently to any challenging situation. So it's a beautiful affirmation. And you see how they're looking up and blowing like the feathers all the way. These would be like the swords. But this is an opportunity knowing that this has to end so that something wonderful could come. And now, so we see with the moon card here. So this is the sun, our illumination, our epiphany, our clarity and sight. Okay. The moon is our heart, the depths of us. Okay. And right now, with this eclipse, that energy of the moon, which is loving, nurturing, protecting, is also feeling somewhat challenged, especially with Capricorn being so practical and wanting to be so dedicated and having common sense. When an eclipse like this happens, it, especially in Capricorn, it kind of throws off your feelings. It's like, wow, what am I feeling right now with this? I'm not seeing things clearly. Things are going to change. But how am I feeling about this right now with this eclipse energy? Another air card, two of air. So we know that this is a choice that we need to make. This would represent the two of swords. You feel like you're at a stalemate. Your heart and your mind, okay, are once again convoluted. And you're commiserating at this time of the eclipse. Well, that's why the eclipses happen. These are times of great stressors and changes that are activated in us. When we cannot see what to do, when we don't know how to choose, when we feel frozen or stuck, this happens for us to pretty much have intervention in our lives. So you're saying this is a stalemate. I'm not certain which way to go with this, but again, this is a mental realm. So, you know, there's some duality to this situation. Yes, heart and mind, um, conscious, subconscious, ego and id, this person, place or situation. You're trying to figure this out like, I, I'm not sure what I want to do with it because your emotions are weighing heavily and blocking you from making a decision. So when the eclipse comes, it's going to take that stress from you, whether you like it or not. And like I said, it may not affect anyone. They might go through this eclipse and go, whew, that was a nothing, you know, but others will feel it. And remembering the eclipse energy goes on for about six months. And the energy we're feeling from this eclipse is resonant from the last eclipse we had in the Leo Aquarius polarity that happened in August. So with this card, we're saying it's creative planning for the future, mapping progress, trusting in the unknown, spirit-inspired ambition. Our mantra could be whenever I can't see how my dreams will coalesce into form, I can trust in the process of co-creation and engage more deeply in the process of envisioning something new. I have already started to make progress and soon my passion will attract the perfect situation for me. 
The light of spirit helps me to see my way and feel the universe aligning to bring me what I need. So there are times, like in the traditional tarot, it would say that you have to trust your inner self. You know, you can't make this decision. You're armed with everything you need, but you're at this frozen point. This card is saying you can trust in the universe that they are intervening to help you with what's coming forward. And then with the next card we have with the world. So what will be revealed for me? What is coming for me? Eight of fire. So this is what our universe is giving us. Let me look at this because this would be our eight of wands in a traditional tarot. So for many of you, the messages you're waiting for, the new job, uh, the raise, um, the gratitude and appreciation that someone or something hasn't been giving you for all the work you've done for them or with them. It also could be travel for some of you that you know things have been stalled that maybe you'll be traveling uh, for a new job further away from where you're working now or closer to home, everyone is gonna be different or moving out of the state. Uh, even some of you out of the country, you know, that this is going to be really taking you somewhere uh, far away. Um, because with the wands, we have inspiration and fire and passion, sure, but it's about work or social situation. Some of you, it will be arrows of love coming to you or the messages you've been waiting for, hearing from this person. You're going to feel very inspired by it, very passionate. You feel like, you know, you've, you've got to take action with this. And this card is definitely action coming swiftly to you. So where the world would represent Saturn, okay, in the Tarot, it's a major arcana. Saturn rules Capricorn. And right now Saturn is in its sign of Capricorn. It's dignified. And this eclipse is in Capricorn. So we have some major alignment for all of us in the outer world as well as your own lives. Okay, this is about all of us, how we're perceiving the outer world and the changes. We don't have to stand by anymore and let people tell us what to do. We can develop our own ideas for how we want to live our lives. We can develop our own ideas for government or religion how you're going to earn your, your money, vocation, a trade, or if you're going to retire, you know, if you're going to buy a new house. This is all going to be what Capricorn will mean for all of us differently, but all these things. You're planning long term for your own foundation, but not someone else's foundation. Parental, spiritual, you know, religion, government, um, politics, you know, any organizations, everyone that we've grown up in a different way of a tradition in different countries, the way we celebrate our lives, our holidays or holy days. This is about you with Capricorn, putting all of your energies into the way you're going to live your life, your paradigms, your theologies and ideologies, the way you want to love, be loved, live your life, the way you want to work, where you want to work, how you want to work. This is all of the energy you're going to be putting. Eight for me is a number for Saturn because it's about manifesting into form. Um, it's so hard to see this beautiful imagery here, but it's like panda and they're on this panda and you just like, they're glowing, this light from within and all around the forest, you have these beautiful lights and orbs glowing around you. So there's a lot of energy around you that you're not, I feel like you're not, well, all of us are not aware of, and that is spiritual energy and we're not tapping into it and we really do need to because once we put our energies in something we're passionate about or when we're inspired from spirit and put the energy to take that action, then it really takes form. So looking at this card, it's gathering momentum and celebrating swift changes, travel, and definitely transformation. And that's what the eclipses do for us. They're going to be a realignment. And like I said, this is the first of the node, the nodule um, cancer Capricorn shift that we're in N in January when we have the last of that polarity of Aquarius and Leo, the next eclipse will be our cancer. So we're starting the Capricorn cancer eclipses now. And I think there's going to be three sets this year. So um, momentum is building as the power of spirit serves to power this transformation. I am traveling to new territories and I am eager to experience all that these lands have to offer. I have arrived at my destination and now the adventure of discovery is energizing me. So for all of us, it'll be something different, but I did mention that some of them, that there's new lands. Now, others of you, it won't be as dramatic. It will be something more internal that is being tri triggered. New lands could be a metaphor for new 
places within yourself that are activated. If it's a mental, a physical, a spiritual, or an emotional activation, that this eclipse is transiting inside of your body to realign you to this new polarity. And knowing again with Capricorn, you're activating all of the qualities of Capricorn in your life. And it's for all of us to get the recognition for the hard work we've done. And look at how the outer world is going to be affected by this. This is major shifts. Old structures being torn down for the new age is upon us. The millennial is upon us. It's time. We can't live in the same structure and paradigm from 100 years ago, let alone 1,000 years ago. And many of us are tiring early of the things we do. You know, we're bored with things after a couple of years. We don't want to work at the same job or career. You're not meant to live and die in the same place or with the same person, the same thing. You're meant to experience your life. And that's what this card's energy is. It's okay for the changes to come. Allow them to come. They bring new excitement and new adventure into your life. But for you to learn and to grow, because that's what your soul longs for, learning and growing in this lifetime. Making choices, friends come and go, love comes and goes, family comes and goes, jobs come and go. There are times even in the relationship, it wavers and wanes, and then it's re-sparked to something new. So it doesn't mean your, your loving relationship has to end. It could be the way it was ends, and something new and more wonderful begins. Even in a job or a career, this is what these eclipses are doing, making the changes. So things can go away and know that things can come in that are better for us. So I hope you enjoy this and that it does give you some help and guidance. I do have the 12 signs of the zodiac up for the month of January if you haven't seen them. And do look to your sun, moon, or ascendant, um, or even your north node if you have a stellium, if the one doesn't resonate for you. So again, thanks again for everyone who's been watching. I appreciate everyone and all of you. Have a great, wonderful eclipse in New Year. As always, I wish you the best.